whilst installing a GoTech emulator in my KN5000, I encountered several problems. Uh, I am hoping that by presenting these problems that others with different models of keyboards or even different brands of keyboards uh, may be able to overcome their problems using the information I had. And basically, um, uh, the, my first problem was it kept telling me there was no disk in the disk drive. I searched the internet for a week or two trying to find information. Uh, Eventually, before giving up and my keyboard had been apart for some time, I decided uh, when walking the dog, perhaps it was not as hard as I thought. So by keeping it simple, I basically modified my analog multi-tester. Uh, you'll see a little video of that coming up shortly. I then used it to determine what pins were high and low on the pins that ran to the old floppy drive. And then having determined where the highs and lows were, I was able to modify the wiring on the emulator to simulate what the floppy drive had done. And it worked perfectly well after a little modification. Uh, there were some hiccups, of course. Here comes the movie now. To determine what steps need to be taken to uh, fit your emulator uh, should the information given on the KN5000 video uh, not apply. Um, you can see here that I have used an old multi-tester that I have set on the 15 volt setting. Uh, I have modified this end with a bit of tire wire that I've wrapped around uh, so that I can poke that in between the little uh, slots in the plugs. Uh, and on the other end I have actually a, an alligator clip uh, that I can also use with a little bit of tire wire just held between them or actually use the clip itself to attach to the ground and the idea is to determine what are high and what are low when a disc is in and when a disc is not out uh, and of course then you need to try and simulate that uh, so that the appliance thinks it is reading a floppy disc that's the equipment basically needed to determine your highs and lows. Well, that's what I used. Any means of determining whether something is high or low would be perfectly adequate. Okay, so here now we're outlining the benefits. Don't forget you can pause this at any stage to read it more carefully. The advantages far outweigh any disadvantages. I've been entirely happy uh, with all my installations to go text, particularly in the KN5000. Uh, be aware, though, when you're working on your keyboards, etc., that there is danger. Uh, in the mains power, make sure you stay free of that. Keep the mains unplugged and away from the keyboard while you're working there. Here is the GoTech emulator and the brand, uh, $34. Um, by following incorrect advice from the manufacturers, I actually destroyed one of these, uh, but for $34 it wasn't such a loss. All my changes I made in the emulator rather than in the keyboard. Uh, here you can see we're opening up the emulator to get into it. Uh, and then using my very high-tech scientific equipment, as you can see there, I've analysed what the old floppy drive was doing, what was high, what was low, what the changes were when I took the disc out. Uh, and then having determined where the, um, the relevant highs and lows were obtainable from, uh, I changed it. And as you can see here by my very scientific thing, pin 6 seemed to be my problem. Uh, basically, I had to drive it low. Uh, but it still needed to be um, opened and closed, and so did the jump up connection uh, on the KN5000. I'm not saying that will be your case. Here's the boss getting a bit cranky. I'm taking too long to get the job done. Okay, so you can see there I've colour dotted the two areas that need to be connected and disconnected by the use of a momentary switch. Uh, I would suggest you watch the actual video on YouTube on the KN5000 to see that. Uh, I needed a momentary switch and I need to put it into the GoTech simulator and here you can see me drilling the hole to put the GoTech uh, switch on and it works perfectly well. A momentary switch was the, a, a delightful answer. Here is the whole project in a nutshell. Basically, we have two connections that need to be connected and disconnected simultaneously by the use of that momentary switch, which is about $5 from a, an electronic shop, uh, a bit of stereo wire, 
uh, and the GoTech emulator plus a memory stick are basically all you will need. The project cost me well under $50, I would say, Australian. Okay, we can see there that everything's wired up and basically ready to go back into the, well, be put into, should I say, uh, the keyboard. Uh, you can see there that I've actually soldered one of those ground pin connections underneath the keyboard. And the whole procedure was basically adding to the keyboard. Please do not take things off the keyboard as advised on the company CD uh, or as I was advised by the company that manufactures it. Uh, try and work a way around with it. There's the emulator ready to go into the keyboard. Uh, and here are the instructions on how to actually use it should you get your emulator going. Uh, you will need to either pause that or print it uh, to read all the instructions a little bit more carefully. Once again, you'll see the actual details of what is required tool-wise and equipment-wise uh, to fulfill the project should you undertake it. And I just hope this has been some help because honestly, I, I had one hell of a time trying to get information and fortunately for me, the information was in my head. Um, and if you like these projects, please leave a comment. Uh, and there is my email address if I can be of any help to you. This has been a bloody amazing production and uh, there I am performing. And unfortunately, this is the end. <laughs>